Patrick Bean, speaking with Jerry Richardson and uh, Ben Smith, leader and deputy leader of the OBA, post uh, your first town hall meeting. Give me a synopsis of how things went tonight. Well, they went great, but to be fair, any opportunity to engage with the community is a win, right? Um, because the simple fact of the matter is we're a political party, we're a political movement, and we're on the move. We're on a listening tour. So, so this entire event was fantastic, especially the level of questions and comments. That's really what this is all about. So not just us presenting these ideas, these platform, it's just as much about listening, learning, engaging, and us having that to and fro with people. You, you talked about this being an opportunity for the unheard to be heard. How was that accomplished? Was that a what, sorry? Accomplished, do you think? Yes, absolutely. Um, for everyone who turned up, and they definitely um, had that opportunity. In fact, I, I didn't anticipate we'd spend that long on questions and comments. The event was supposed to end, uh, I think, an hour earlier. Yeah. And we just we just said, let's, let's go, let's go. You're asking good questions, hard questions, facts, truth. Like, let's get to the, let's get to it. And so, so that was fantastic. Right. Now, you focus, Ben, you focus on education a lot. Um, now, we're in a process of education reform. Um, what are your thoughts on what's going on now in terms of reform and what you also added to that in terms of the OBA stance on it? The problem is that the education reform has caused a lot of confusion. It's caused a lot of confusion to parents, which then impacts their children, and people are not willing to roll their dice with their children's education. Uh, we have to make sure that we've taken politics out of education. That's why I tend not to speak directly on this subject a lot, because I think what we have to get to is that the principals are put in position to actually control their school, that the teachers are given all of the support necessary for them to be able to get the job done of teaching our young people. And then there needs to be communication so that the parents are being accountable for what has to happen when they take that child home. We need to move to a position where world-class education doesn't mean that you have to pay for it. Now, you both spoke about repowering the economy. How do we get that done? Well, there's a lot of this. Well, first of all, it's more than one thing. You know, I think sometimes we're, we're, we're tempted to look into a problem and go, okay, there's one problem. Uh, that's the, uh, the economy is horrible and it's not working for anyone save one or two people and so we say there's one solution well yes there's more than one solution to this problem so it's just as much making sure the government doesn't compete with with private sector it's as much making sure that it's not hard to do business in Bermuda so for example right now if you want to get a truck um, to do catering on a on a boat or anything like that or want to get a liquor license on a boat all of these things are incredibly difficult so why is someone going to sink $100,000, $200,000 into a business that employs three Bermudians if, if he's got to spend half of that to, for the lawyers and accountants. We got to get out of that. So, so that is a way. Obviously, increasing population is a way. But not just that, putting the right population in the right place. We're talking about the city of Hamilton. The city of Hamilton is our commerce center. That's where the vast majority of our commerce happens. We'll walk into it right now. It's what, 9 o'clock on a, on a, on a Monday? Well, it's ghosts. It's clearly not a commerce center. So that, that's what we mean, like, re-empowering or empowering or repowering the economy is way more than a one-trick pony. It's not going to be one investor. It's going to be investors over time who trust the government to do the right thing with their money and, and get a return. And they know they'll get a return with the OBA. Okay. Now, now, the ruling party has been on a bit of a, a campaign as of late, as of late. Uh, speaking against the OBA and, and, and saying that you're, you don't care about Prometheus and your policies may further displace Prometheus. What can you say to that? Well, the first thing I'd say is you're correct that they've been on a bit of a tour, but you'll notice that they are attacking the One Bermuda Alliance, who is the opposition, instead of talking about their record what they've been doing over the last six years that has put the country in a position that multiple people are getting on a plane and leaving forever. So the issue that I have is, when are they going to actually talk about their record? Why do we have to be the ones that are defending against them? 
they need to start to talk to the people about the mistakes that they've continued to make that have put the country in the position that it's in that now the One Bermuda Alliance has to come in to try to fix. Okay. Now, you're, you're at a distinct disadvantage with this 36 margin in, in, in Parliament or something like that. Are you wary of another snap election and are, are you prepared or better prepared than the last time? I want him to call it as quickly as possible. Bermuda cannot sustain more of this and the difference is going to be stark for what what we as the incoming government will do versus the outgoing government. It, it's it's. I'm so encouraged right now because we have unique problems. We have um, it, we have. It's not a question of which of, of candidates. It's a question of which candidate is best in which community. We have our volunteers are increasing. Our membership is increasing. We're active. You saw us this weekend. We were out on Kinley Field Road. Um, we have tons of ideas. But here's the catch. We're confident enough to stand in front of the community at a town hall and answer for our records and ask questions of the community. So that's very nice that uh, they're on this attack plan. But I, I follow up Ben. I, I echo Ben. They have to attack us because there's nothing else for them to do. Right, right. Okay. Last thing. Relieving yourself of the UBP stigma that seems to have stuck to you, so to speak, or, or, so, or, is, being, so I will, or, or is being pinned on you. I will repeat the same thing that I repeated tonight to the audience. Jaron Richardson and Ben Smith are the first generation of the One Bermuda Alliance. I have never been a part of the UBP. Mm. The truth of the matter is, a lot of our economy was built by the people that were part of that party. We also have multiple members within our party that were part of the Progressive Labor Party. We are an open tent. We make sure that we have a cross-section of our entire community. We will look like our community, we will sound like our community, and because we have those diverse opinions, we have the ability to come up with the answers that will best represent all of Bermuda.